Hello there folks, welcome back to the Chaps Guide. My name is Ash and of course I am your host on this journey through men's style, self-development and personal grooming. Now I'm always here to help you on your own pilgrimage to Chap Nirvana and I encourage you to send me questions where you seek my advice, bit of support, maybe just my observations. I'm always happy to offer my unqualified advice because I'm no expert, I am just somebody like you who's on that pilgrimage, but I may be a little further ahead or I may have a different perspective. So my sort of guidance may be useful to you. Now today I've received a question from a viewer who wants some advice in enhancing their style, but within a specific sphere because they have a way of life which perhaps makes it difficult or challenging for them to dress up typically in daily life. Now I'll read the question. This question comes from somebody called H.R. Bower and he says, I want to pose a question to you. I have a love for suits and dressing well. I want to begin working on becoming more sophisticated and gentlemanly. For context, I served in the United States Navy in the submarine service and I currently work in a blue collar profession. So my question is, how can I overcome my blue collar traditions and become the gentleman I truly want to be? Do I need to change my profession? Can you be a factory worker and a gentleman? I would like your input on this, HR Bower. Well, sir, Mr. Bower, you find yourself in a situation that has been faced by many men over the years, particularly those of us who were born into perhaps rather lowly stations in life. I myself was born into a coal mining community in the South Wales Valleys, not 70 or 80 miles from where I sit now. A place which uh, these days you would say has fallen into somewhat dilapidation and I think poverty is quite commonplace in the South Wales Valleys. And certainly when I was growing up, uh, everybody in my sphere of life worked in blue collar professions. Many were miners or worked within the mining industry or within heavy industry. And to put a sort of simple point on it, I never saw people dressing formally. People typically wore, you know, working clothes. But like yourself, as I grew older, I had something of a yearning to look more stylish in my daily attire. I wanted to rise above, you know, the, the typical clothing which I would see on a daily basis. Because, you know, I wanted to reap the benefits which being an intentionally well-dressed man brings to you. And, you know, those benefits are, are not just what people imagine. Primary amongst the benefits of being well-dressed for me is an increase or a boost to your own self-esteem. Because I know, right, if I'm wearing a pair of tracksuit trousers and a, you know, maybe just a, a, a t-shirt around the house, I don't feel my best. You know, I wouldn't look in the mirror when I'm dressed like that and say to myself, you know, Ash, today you look like a million dollars. However, if I was to dress up, put a suit on, maybe just a jacket uh, with a shirt and tie and a pair of nice trousers, chinos even, I feel totally different. I feel more equipped to face the world. When I look in the mirror now, I think, hmm, you're looking good, you're looking sharp. This is not vanity, this is not immodesty, but I know that I feel a bit stronger, a bit more confident when I dress well. So there's nothing wrong Here's in in wanting to be a gentleman, that was my phone giving me some information in my pocket, excuse me for that, but um, you know, there's nothing wrong in wanting to dress well at all. The other reason why people choose to increase their style is because of the responses you get from the people around you. Because you will find, you know, if you walk into a store and you're dressed casually, as I just described in, you know, simple sort of uh, t-shirt and jeans or whatever, the sales agents, they just treat you in the typical way. But if you walked into that same environment and you're well dressed, you look like a person of consequence. You will get an entirely different response from the people that you encounter, particularly if they're providing a service for you because they look at your attire and of course, be it right or be it wrong, when we look at somebody for the first time, we've never met them before, the only way we can place any judgment on that person is in their aesthetics, right? how they present themselves. You know, if you're well-dressed, we will form an opinion. 
we might suggest, well, this is a person who perhaps either works in a professional uh, manner of, you know, uh, employment, flies, or perhaps they are somebody who takes an interest in themselves, or maybe somebody who has a good income. Whatever being well-dressed projects and means to the people who look at you, that's what the, they're going to, um, you know, determine. So that's one of the reasons why we choose to get dressed up. We get better service in situations. You go into a nice restaurant, even if they don't have a dress code, and you go in there dressed up nicely, wearing a shirt and tie, I guarantee you that you will get a better seat than the person who comes in behind you who's wearing, you know, a, a trucker jacket and jeans. Because they will seat you in a position where perhaps it's more of a uh, ambassadorial or a representative seat for that for that restaurant. So as you walk into the restaurant, if that restaurant has aspirations of being smart and stylish, they will want new patrons walking in to see people who reflect that image of that restaurant. So they'll put you in the best seat because when you walk in, you will see somebody well-dressed. You will interpret that restaurant as being a place where well-dressed, stylish, and maybe professional people go to take their, you know, their riposte or have a meal. But if you're in that, you know, so perhaps grubby trucker jacket they might seat you at the back where you're not so visible but more than anything it's a sense of personal pride which drives me to dress well you know so my response to you mr bauer is no sir most certainly you do not have to change your profession merely in your desire to become more of a gentleman to enjoy the simple pleasures, let's be honest, the simple pleasures of getting dressed up and looking in that mirror and thinking to yourself, I look sharp today, I can take on whatever challenge this world throws in my direction. I'm ready for it. You know, if I'm going for a job interview, if I encounter the woman in my life who will be my future wife, she will see me in the, in the way which I would like to project myself as a well-dressed, intentionally well-dressed man. I would say that your clothing is an extension of your personality as much as any other part of the life that you lead. But I know that I dress for me. All right? I do not dress because of influence or pressure upon me. If I chose that route and I looked at the other men of my age who inhabit the world in which I live, I would not dress with a collar and tie or wear a sports jacket because my contemporaries same age, same class, same locality in which I live. They simply don't dress like that. People dress more casually, that's true. They dress, you know, maybe just for comfort. Whereas for me, I want my appearance not to be influential, but to be a good representation of the person that I would like to be thought of by the people I encounter. So that's really why I choose to dress in the way that I do. Now, when it comes to dressing well, you're talking about enhancing your style because you're a blue collar worker. So was I, there's nothing wrong with that, right? I don't uh, perhaps think that you're looking at your profession in the way that you should. It's an important function. You know, the captains of industry and these great people, whoever they may be, they can't get to where they are without people like you and I being in the boiler room of the industry, making it work. So being a blue collar worker is nothing of a downgradement from the people who are white collar. They've just taken a different path in life and I don't envy them. I wouldn't wish to swap places with them and neither should you. However, when it comes to stepping up your style in a way which is comfortable for you, I would suggest you employ what I have used used to call, still call, my volume system, all right? So I want you to imagine the clothing that you wear to be something like the volume level of, you know, your your uh, your music center at home, right? Or your, your music center, do they exist anymore? But you know, your hi-fi system. And imagine that you're on zero now. So the way you are right now is just plain zero. This is the way you've always dressed, it's casual, it's the same as everybody else. You may be wearing, let's say, on your feet sneakers training shoes, tennis shoes, whatever you call them. Turn it up one notch. In the first instance, just turn it up one notch. Maybe go to a hybrid sneaker. So this is a sneaker, still got the sneaker stole, uh, sole, but it has more of a formal upper. Might have, uh, you know, a brown leather or even a brogue style. You can have all types these days. You're still wearing a sneaker, but you've definitely turned up the formality. Or if you feel confident, turn it up two little strokes. Get yourself into a pair of desert boots. 
After a year or so of being in those desert boots, you really now inhabit that world of slightly more style. You can then turn it up again. Get yourself a dress shoe, maybe a brogue, whatever takes your fancy. You know, and you're on your journey. Maybe level 10 will be a full hole cut patent leather shoe. You may never get there, all right? That might not be your path, but you certainly may get all the, all the way up to, you know, a black cap to Oxford or something like that. But for whatever point in the world that you in, in, inhabit, turn yourself up slowly because that way you don't have to jump from a t-shirt to a bow tie overnight. That would be overwhelming for you and the people around you. They're going to think, what the hell is going on here? Turn it up incrementally. You know, if you wear a t-shirt all the time, as a matter of course, put yourself into a polo shirt. You will enjoy the enhanced shape and structure and cut of that garment and the structured collar will be a nice enhancement. Um, if you wear a hoodie or a trekker jacket, turn it up one or two steps, get into a Harrington jacket before eventually getting into maybe a sports jacket or a blazer or a tweed jacket if it's cooler where you live. And hats are a good way of signaling this incremental turn up because you might not wear a hat at all. So start wearing one. Or if you wear a baseball cap, you know, the sort of standard hat of the world, turn it up and instead of wearing a baseball cap, buy yourself a flat cap or a newsboy cap. These are quite casual. They're quite openly accepted in the world, but it's a definite step forward. And then once you've worn a baseball cap for a while, turn up the volume, get yourself a trilby or maybe a fedora, or if it's a hot country, a Panama hat. Before you turn all the way up, maybe you're never going to get to the top. You know, you're never going to get to level 10. You're never going to need a top hat or a Homburg hat or a boater hat if it's a hot country. Your highest level might only be eight, but that's fine because on the journey, you have learned to live with these incremental steps. And of course, now you can fill the parts of your life where those steps are necessary because you don't have to dress smart all the time. Sometimes you only need a level three in your life you can then turn it up and down as necessary. Now, one piece of advice I can offer you, which you will perhaps find beneficial on that style pilgrimage, which you're about to undertake, is to make this journey personal for you. That way you will feel more connected to it and you will feel more inclined to continue with it, to stick with it. Because a lot of people, when people start offering them, you know, observations, why are you dressing like that? Uh, you look a fool. You look a clown. Are you on the way to the circus? Are you on the way to a job interview? Who's died? Are you going to a funeral? I've heard them all over the years. And the best way I have found to be a foil to those sort of reposts is simply to make my journey more personal. So you've mentioned in your letter that you were a veteran of the US Navy. First of all, thank you for your service, sir. The world has a great debt to pay for the United States military for keeping us all safe. But also, if you personalize your outfit with some throwback to your time in service, you will find a much better connection to your new clothing. So for instance, ties. I'm a, a Royal Air Force veteran myself and I frequently wear my Royal Air Force tie because it really connects me to my history, the 10 years I spent in military service, and I'm proud of that connection. I love wearing that tie because when people see me in the street who share that heritage, that background, they recognize it, they come up and they say hello. And I make friends wherever I go just because I'm wearing a tie. Now you might choose to wear the regimental tie of the United States Navy. And if somebody comes up to you and says, why the hell are you wearing a tie? What's all that about? What a fantastic riposte you can make by saying, well, it's my US Navy tie. You know, I'm a US Navy veteran. I guarantee the only response you're gonna get is, thank you for your service, sir. Because how can anybody take issue with somebody who has had the nobility to serve in the armed forces of their country and protect them by making personal sacrifices? If you want to, perhaps if you're not a tie wearing person, wear a lapel badge, which shows your affiliation and your previous service. It marks the same sort of process really, a little bit smaller. I like the tie method because not a lot of people recognize the different ties, but people who are in the know are in the know and you will find uh, maybe doors open for you, which were not there before because you've decided to you know, present to the world your pride and your history. 
Now, another thing you can do, I know you said, you know, do you have to change your profession? You don't have to change your profession, but you can allow your new style of dressing to open doors for you. Because if you want to be amongst other people who share the same ideology, you can do things like joining Rotary Clubs becoming a member of a military uh, veterans body. So here in the UK, we have the Royal British Legion. They have clubs. You can go there. You'll find everybody wearing their regimental ties and their badges on their blazers and things. And you know instinctively there are people there who are going to have a conversation with you who share your philosophy to life. Rotary clubs, again, charitable bodies essentially where people have, you know, meals and do things for the community. By being well-dressed, it kind of opens the door to these things. It doesn't matter your profession at all. Uh, or even getting involved with charities which do things, you know, being a trustee or a leader or simply a volunteer. If you want to surround yourself with people who share your sensibilities of being well dressed and the personal qualities which go along with that, those are the places to go. But before you know it, you know, doors will start to open for you. People will address you in a different way. Services will get better wherever you go. You'll get the better seats. You'll get the upgrades when you start going places. It's almost like a superpower. Because in this modern world, where nobody dresses well, being intentionally well-dressed is like a minor superpower. And it's definitely uh, something which you, you want to follow. But there's one thing I want to leave you today with, Mr. Bauer, and that is this. Your clothes are merely that, the outer shell of the human being that you are. Being a gentleman is much, much more than this veneer of being well-dressed, you know, knowing how to tie a Windsor knot and knowing how to put a mirror shine on your shoes. It's just veneer. A gentleman is the person who dwells within that outer shell. It is the courtesy and the respect by which you treat other people that will make you a gentleman. So even when people will say negative comments to you because you've decided to wear a tie to the social club on this particular occasion, you never swear, you never lose your temper, you never take the mickey back. The best way to be a gentleman is to take it on the chin, thank, you, thank them for their courtesy in passing a comment on your attire, and carry on with your life knowing that you are the better man. Now that is being a gentleman. Remember, the clothing are nothing. You know, it is what lies beneath which maketh the man indeed. But clothing is a good place to begin because it boosts your self-esteem and it allows you to ascend to these different levels as we go through life. So there we go, Mr. Boa. I hope you found that useful. Um, it was lovely to respond to your question. Again, if you have a question for me, by all means, if you want a bit of a philosophical outlook in the way I've just given it, where, along with a practical suggestion about improving one's style, drop me a question. You'll find my email address on the screen now, or you go to the About section on the YouTube channel, you'll find my email address there. Or of course, you can just drop it into the comments section below, and I will do my best to respond to you, either in a video or maybe just through a comment, but whatever your, your question dictates. If you have enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more like this, don't forget to click the button and subscribe. If you'd like to support the channel, you could either buy me a coffee or become a patron. And my patrons receive a additional video content from me weekly and I enter into a bit more of a personal dialogue with those folks over on the Patreon page and if you want to know how to do all of those things you'll find the instructions in the show notes below. You'll also see the names of my esteemed patrons at the end of this video. So until the next time, go on your own style journey by turning up your volume level a few clicks at a time and I will see you again very soon. <laughs>